Now, the presentation has three parts. I will look through the challenges facing us globally, and I will also look into the opportunities. Whenever there are challenges, there are opportunities. The problem is, like Helen Keller said that before, whenever there is a door which is closed, because we are so, uh, if you like, uh, disappointed of the, of the door which is closed, we don't look to the door which is already open somewhere else. So I always believe when there is a door which is closed, there is a door somewhere open somewhere. So tomorrow, those who they do not get the grant or the award, they should have that belief there is another door somewhere. It might be there, it might be here, it might be somewhere else. And finally, I will give some policy because I'm coming from a policy background. I will look into global issues, global markets, because this is where people should focus. You are from India, but the market is not India. You are from China, but the market is not China. And a good example I always give Oxford Street in London. If you come to London, Oxford Street is a global market. Languages, everything. It's not really a UK street, it's a, it's a global street. And I will give some policy as to do local or global. So quickly I will look through global dimensions and I will also give some example of country specific because if I not just talk about global example, but you have to give some country specific to let people understand their issues. I will also look into some issues to do with their conceptualization, tourism, and I will go through analysis and some performance actions. So quickly, I will not bombard you with the methodology, but the data we have used for my this presentation and other is all based on publicly available data. I always one of the campaigners for open access. I always campaign for information to be available online. Anyone can access it from everywhere. So if the World Bank report, United Nations Development Program, UNESCO, in SEAT, which is producing innovation indicators and so on and so forth. The problem when you're looking at the global issues the data is not available about all countries. So if you look to most of these international organizations, including World Bank, United Nations, you can find all the set of indicators about the US or Canada or America, sorry, uh, is all available. But when you go to country like Ghana, Nigeria, or Barbados, uh, you may not find all the information there. So you cannot really have a complete analysis correctly. This is causes something called the, uh, the quality of the data. Whenever we do analysis about the problems, we have to be aware the data is not, there is a question about the quality. And I like this card, and I gave you four examples from the US itself, if you can see here, in the top right corner, or in the bottom, where is, uh, Barack Obama was from uh, Hawaii, 30% of Hawaii welfare uh, information about people who are asked in the, in the welfare department is missing. Our computer department in the UK, they were not up to date. So the issue is not just in the developing countries, but well it might. Now, again, I will not spend time here, but if you are, I'm quite happy to share this with you. There are lots of theoretical concept behind this talk. We also have looked into lots of companies in terms of how they use knowledge management. Because if I come to you and talk to you about the importance of knowledge management, I will have to make sure I have looked into private and public sector. And we have looked into many companies, including Starbucks. Starbucks uses knowledge management in order to achieve customer satisfaction. And that's the top one, the, the, the Department of Civil Affairs, in the project we did here, and so on. This is from all over the world. And that on the left-hand corner, the red book, is the model we created called the Knowledge the Smart KM model. Anyone interested, send me, I will send it to you for free, not for charge, if you will get it. Now, the first issue is globalization. Many people are still in this planet confused. When I travel, they say to me, Adam, this is the information era, this is globalization era. What happened? So what happened in the world is three stages of development. We started with industrialization, and then we went through information revolution, and we are in the globalization revolution now. Many people think we are in the information revolution. We are not. We are in the globalization era. Information, we pass through it. Yes, we are. Digitalization, and we're going through it. But what is important in the world now is globalization. And this is exactly what is you are doing here. Global Yours Forum. And I think this is a great idea. I really commend you all, because really, this is the issue. We need to talk global. Because we are global, we travel, we speak different languages, but this is important. We are not in the information revolution era, but we are in the globalization era. People 
come together need to understand each other better. And globalization involves anything, simply anything. McDonald's is a phenomenon of globalization. Terrorism, productivity, yours, everything is globalization. Sustainability and so on and so forth. These are our global challenges. You need to see them, to remember them, because when you want to deploy a knowledge-based economy, you need to consider your uh, challenges. Now, the issue here I want you to consider, when you're talking about the global challenges, you need to talk about global challenges from your own perspective. So if I'm a medical doctor, I will say for me, the global challenges are this. If you say these are the challenges from an agricultural point of view. So, but these challenges, we all share them. Food production, conflict and terrorism, water resources, energy, and so on and so forth. And you can see there the health and development and, the, and so on and so on. Now, this being argued, what, what is the most important challenges facing us all in the world? What is the most important challenge facing all of us globally? Part of, but the resource allocation is part of the sustainability, as he said. And this is Jeffrey Sachs, well, well known uh, professor from Columbia University. He was the advisor of Kofi Annan when Kofi Annan launched the Millennium Development Goals. And he, as you can see here, he said the biggest challenge that we are all facing is sustainable development. You think it's terrorism or this or but it's not real. It's about sustainable development. And I'm sure this is a whole common picture for all of you. I don't want to spend time here. But that picture where you can see in the city where our university is based, University of Sussex, is based in Brighton. Brighton, some of you from Europe, you might know how Brighton is our coastal city. During the summertime, I lived there 14 years. During the summer, if there is a very hot weekend, Saturday, Sunday, the local council told us in the paper publicly to clean the two miles beach, only two miles, over a weekend usage by us. It costs a, that, that local city 100,000 pounds. So it's almost 150,000 to clean the small beach, which who did that? Us. Picnic, you take your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it is. 100,000 is being used just if there's a very hot weekend and many people are bombarded. That's one beach in Pride, in the UK, one beach, what about the whole world? So there is a huge problem here. Now, when I, I, I wanted to ask you, but I didn't want to talk about transportation. Many people, they say to me, Alam, I don't use public buses, not because Alam, I'm not a sustainable person or I don't care about the environment, but I use my car because of convenience. And for me, somebody from a marketing background, I understand that word very carefully. From a marketing point of view, and for you young entrepreneurs, you have to understand, in most of the time, we are not selling products, we are giving people convenience. So if you're taking a private car from here to Abu Dhabi, a VIP car, it gives you convenience. It's not like the bus or a public. You can relax, you can stop the driver anytime. Convenience is what you pay for. And I remember this in Atlantic City, I said to the taxi driver, why do I pay you 300 pounds to take me to New York? Uh, in say two hours, or, sorry, one hour and a half, my flight is 10 p.m. and I need to take the bus, kill my time with my wife. They said to me, you are not paying me for taking you there. I know that you can only pay $40 to take the bus, but you are paying for your convenience. So when we took his car while we are driving and then I start talking with my wife and he realized we are enjoying the trip, he looked at me and he said, you see, convenient. <laughs> so you are relaxed now. This is what you paid for. I paid 300 instead of $40 for convenience. Nothing. I guess I'm not in much. And so on. So let's move quickly. Now, we already used, we are over debt. I mean, this is all things you know. We have problems with water shortage, soils, and so on, and so on. So science, technology for development. Very quick thing. This is where the whole story I'm going to start. Tony Blair, our ex-prime minister, he said at Oxford University Union in 2000, in a conference like this, he said, Without science, we cannot progress our economy. And at that time, the UK was one of the leading countries, was prospering. We are very good at that, that time, remember before the crisis. He said, without science, our economy will not progress. Full stop. And he said, why? Because he said, uh, closing the productivity gap, producing more, 
and, and raising Britain's productivity performance will mean more jobs and higher living standards. As the top man on the top picture, you can see that man, he's also one respected guy, uh, uh, academics from Africa. He said, we talk about science and technology as if they're going to solve the whole problem. They do not solve the problem. So you can see the different perspectives starting from here to emerge. This is where the whole concept and theory about technology transfer, before we come to knowledge, came from this man who got the Nobel Prize back in the 80s. He said, that child, or that, man, that kid in Africa, I took this picture by myself in the, in the 90s. He said, no matter how hard he works, no matter how hard he works, and no matter how uh, fertile the soil is, imagine for productivity in agriculture, you need a good uh, soil, highly nutritive, fertile soil, and you need to work hard. He said, no matter how hard he works, you can see there, the man who farms, as his father used to do, he will never, he will never increase productivity. So if you take Brazil, Brazil farmers are the best in the world in the production of coffee, beans, one of the best. And in Sudan, they produce beans, one of the leading countries, Nigeria, Senegal, where is the guy from Nigeria? You know, your country is leading, Nigeria is a leading country worldwide in the production of groundnut. Nigeria, Senegal. But do you also, what is Nigeria is doing, on the other side, is number one in the world in the import of tomato paste. Do you believe that? Why you in Nigeria cannot just produce your own tomato paste? You import it all the way from other places. So, so this is where it comes from. He said, the important thing is uh, the government, we need to have a technical change, and the government role is to increase technical change. They have to promote technical change. And that what's happening in this country, the United Arab Emirates, is one of the good examples always cited by the United Kingdom, by the United Nations and the World Bank, because the government of the United Arab Emirates is promoting technical change. Emirates Airline, the one some of you might have used to come to this journey, they are one of the best airlines, not because United Arab Emirates is giving them subsidy and money, but because they are advancing the way you are entertaining. Here it comes about the valley. So back in 2007, UK, France, Germany, and Holland, they took these three airlines, Emirates, Etihad, and Qatar, to the European court saying, these, these airlines are competing with us unfairly. They are getting subsidy from their governments. And we, British Airways, KLM, uh, Air France, we can't compete with them. We can't compete with them because they are being subsidized by UAE, Qatar, and... Uh, uh, so they, it's not a fair competition. They lost the case in the European Union because these airlines, they've proven they are competitive because of the way they are de deploying knowledge and innovation. Very sophisticated. It's not about subsidy. So let me move. This is the whole concept about technology transfer. So new technology, all technology, there is a gap in between. And if you can reduce that gap, that means you do productivity. But if you look to the graph down, this is from the World Bank, back in the 1958, the GDP, where is our girl from Ghana? Where is the Ghanaian girl? La <laughs> in 1958, the GDP of Ghana was exactly the same like Korea. Can you see that? This is the World Bank statistics. So you can see Ghana and the Republic of Korea in 1958, they had the same GDP. And look in the 1990s when the issue of knowledge economy came out, you can see where is Ghana and where is the Republic of Korea. And all the economy, they said that gap is to do with knowledge. Do you know the country number one in the world in the export, export of ICT products and services? Country number one in the world as an exporter of ICT products. No. I know it's a surprise to you, it's not China. And it's not the US. This country, yes, number one in the world. So you can you see how people making money? Because it's, it has a history of it. Now, example again from Africa. Lots of, of the land, because we do have a problem called food. What we eat is essential. African soil is still very fertile. This is a long time ago. 
And again, when there's a big project done in Uganda, anyone from Uganda here, you can see that the, the, the potential of reducing. If you deploy technology, it will make a big difference. But the important question I want you to take from me, one of my critical messages, every conference I talk about technology, I say to people, many people get the definitions wrong, and the correct thing is this. There's a difference between technology transfer and technology diffusion. Technology transfer is that technology is transferred, is moved. Like me, on Monday, early morning, I will be physically moving from Dubai to London. That's a physical transfer of alum to London. But the diffusion is the spread of the technology within the community. So you have the movement, technology comes from the UK or Germany or from uh, uh, Malaysia to the Dubai. And then you have the other part, which is the spread of this technology within the community. And all the research done, and we have done, proven the technology will not be spread within the community unless you have six, seven factors are taken seriously. That doesn't mean any technology you transfer physically from London to Dubai will work. It will not work. And there is also another thing here. You need to consider many factors which will help you to increase the diffusion of the technology, which I will also read shortly. This is a, a typical picture you can take from most African countries. Sudan, Nigeria, Ghana, most African countries. These are common pictures you can take from any agricultural land. Accessibility is a big problem. It's not like the farmers we have in England or in Germany. You can't access them. You can see the car was the flooding there because roads are very poor. You can see the level of the water on the one on the top is very low, irrigation water. They have the water, but they can't even get it to the plant. And the problem is, when the moment you put the seed in the soil, we call that the soil day. The day we put the, soil, the seed inside the soil is the day we call it the soil day. But unless the water touches the seed, we can't start counting the time which it, should, it, will, it will grow. So you put the seed today, and you will say, the sowing date, I have followed the recommendation by the, the, the science. If you, if you have to grow your wheat on the 15th of October, and on the 15th of October, the seed is inside the soil, but actually the water touches that seed after two weeks. So your actual date is two weeks. Therefore, you cannot expect the productivity. We will talk you. And these are all things you have to consider. The other thing is, any technology you guys are going to introduce, and that's why you can see me very critical to some of you yesterday, you should start from some, we call him the end user. Who is your end user? If you start from there, then you will get it right. Like your, your, like your colleague, uh, colleague, where is he? The one who was talking about love yesterday. I told him, who is the user? Is it me? He said to me, you, where, where is, uh, I call him the love guy, where is he? <laughs> So this love guy, you need to understand who is the user of that technology. It's a brilliant idea, we exchange messages, but who is the user of that app? The same applies to you from Egypt about, uh, and so on. Now, let's quickly go. Technology and globalization, more than 150 different definitions of globalization, unfortunately, and there's many, many things. I mean, I think I will move quickly on globalization because I already discussed, I spent, but the, this is a very famous quote, very famous man. This guy is a Russian-born, Syrian trained and Harvard economist. So he got three different backgrounds. He's very well known. He said, each country, India, China, Russia, whatever it is, has its own distinctive resources and stage of backwardness. So each one of us in this room, we have our own distinctive resources. And this is what I will tell you guys, the use, you need to understand what is your distinctive resources. And resources, we classify them into two groups. Resources which you need as essential to compete and resources which you need to do what? To do the minimum job. So, sorry, the essential to use and the resources you need to be competitive. So we call them threshold resources, which means for you, you should be speaking very good English. Why I'm saying English? Not because I'm from Britain, but you need to communicate in English. Somehow or another. Secondly, you should use software very well, reasonable. You should be able to communicate well with other people. You should stand up here, train yourself how to be a good speaker. How I'm going to give you money as an investor if I can't even 
It doesn't matter you shake here, but you need to convince me. That's why if you look to the movies, the movies you normally like are the movies they really excite you. Go back to any movie, American movie, they're very good at doing that. The one you like, it's not really about the story. Yes, the story and so on and so on. But the actors who will move you, these are the ones who excite you. So you have to have that skill. Now, you come to the second resources, which are the resources will make you unique. So you have threshold and unique. Unique, that means I will fight for you. Like yesterday, we were sitting, oh, I definitely want to have to work with you. I definitely want us. This is you need to make yourself unique. What is so unique about you? And that's what I said yesterday, remember to the, one of the, your, your projects here. What is unique about that? So in order for us to develop anything, you have to remember that. So billions of people never made a telephone call, yet don't be surprised. If, you de if you're developing a business on a global stage, you have to remember many millions of people, they have never even used mobile phones. And so on, many billion, electricity, many people that are struggling with electricity. It's a big problem in Africa and other places. So let me just move quickly. Now, the issue of global, global issues are being tackled. I mean, I can't remember when it is in, in, in Cambridge. They invited me to come and talk, and the question was, seriously, that was the flyer, you can see there. Would you prefer a mobile phone or a tablet? When I got the invitation from Cambridge, the student union, I was, I thought this is not a serious email. But then when I read it, and I called the girl, she said to me, yes, I want you to come and talk about a debate of four people from Cambridge, Manchester. And I said, what do you mean by a tablet? Really, this is, this is the adverts you can see. And I, I, it, it took me time to understand the question. And that's what you need to do. You need to understand what people are thinking about. Would you prefer a mobile phone or toilet? And the question was, what do you, how do we solve the global problems? By giving them more money or teach them how to do things? That's what they're referring to. And that's why Oxfam, one of the big charities, they say, don't give developing, uh, developing countries they don't need charity or handouts. They need you to give them the skills to do things. And that's what you should think of this one. So there is lots of debate here. One country like Sudan, you can see, this country is special in Africa because the world is saying that. This is where technology can actually be tested. The World Food Organization said this country could save the whole Africa because they got huge land, they got the, the river Nile, but unfortunately they didn't. And you can see it's changing. One time they said it's the best country, one is the whole place. And then we have from bottom to going up, and then we have the lifting of the economic sanction. Things are moving in a country where the whole world is saying it could be the promise of solving poverty in Africa. And two days ago, we heard what is going on between Sudan and Russia and so on. So really, it, this is how it works. Sustainability, I will ask you quickly, quick questions, you need to answer them. First question. And I need to answer quickly. Sustainability is about the environment, CO2, climate change, etc., should be given to the environmentalist. So if we want to do something with sustainability, it's about carbon dioxide, climate change, and we should look for those who are graduates of environmental. We give it to them. Is that true or false? If you're saying true, you stand up. If you're saying false, you will stand. If you're saying true, stand up. Don't be shy. So it's not true. But my, my, my question in the exam, is it true or false? <laughs> I want anyone from Hungary here? Hungary? Hungary, Hungarian here? I went, when I was doing my MBA, we visited a big plant for Bernard Matthews producing turkey food. And the guy who was running it, he said, Bernard Matthews, he always tell him, or training him, when I ask you a question about productivity of this factory, you tell me yes or no. If you say yes, but, I will say to you, thank you, I know the answer. <laughs> this is how business happens. I say yes or no. Yes, it's, it's false because this is a combination, it's a multidisciplinary process, it's about learning, teaching, it's not just about the environment and so on. Now, the second question quickly, sustainability is about development and, de sorry, about development and developing countries. So people like us in UK, Australia, this is not a problem for us. True or false? False. No one true? It's false. When we went to Australia, they told us in a conference in Brisbane, Alam, you have to make your shower five minutes. They have something called the five-minute shower in Australia. 
And I said, what is a five minutes shower? And they said, we don't have, this is a time where we have shortage of water, Australia. And we said, what does that mean? He said, when you go to the shower, make sure you only do it in five minutes. So you have a timer in the shower because there's no water. And people didn't believe that. In the UK, in 2000, when we had the flooding, we had some of our cities, Gloucester at the time of Gordon Brown, is completely locked. No electricity, the water was flooding the whole system. So sustainability is not a developing country's problem, it's for everyone. Third question uh, here, neither developed countries, sorry, neither developed countries, developing countries can cope uh, co effectively with sustainability problems in isolation and we have to work together. <coughs> sustainability issues can be solved by money and or software. Force. With all of you yesterday, we are designing, you are designing apps. So you, all of you are designing software to solve our problems. How is it false? It's true. Is it false or true? False. It's true. It's, it's, it's false because you know, it is true. It, it, false is true. Yes. <laughs> now, because the, because the thing is, if you look to reach GCC countries, including United Arab Emirates, they are not doing. They are. They have not been doing very well in terms of sustainability. In fact, in 2005, the bottom countries in the whole world, they were from GCC, Saudi Arabia, one of the richest countries in the world, UAE, and Kuwait, because sustainability is not about money. Yes, they are rich countries, but still they didn't get it right. That's why UAE implemented a program from 2005, and now they moved all the way up because of that reason. It's not about money. I know this is easy. Sustainability policies and procedures and approaches can be mandated from the management. True or false? True. So the manager can actually implement it, can force you to do it. True or false? It's false because you can see how that girl is scared. Can she really do something? She's scared. You have to do this. No, this is the Japanese have changed that style of management. So it's not. So sustainability cannot be independent of the organization business. It's not really just you come and force people to do it. Now, quickly. This is how it has been sustainability journey. I wouldn't go, I know this is, I mean, all this is available, you can use it. But there is a long way for this journey. And this is when they met and they created this, they call it development that meets the needs of the present, us, without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So for you guys, we should have worked hard not to compromise. If I am having two mobile phones, I have to make sure my daughter will be at least able to have two of them. So it's a very basic, basic concept. And this is uh, the country they came and they met at the Norwegian prime, prime minister at the time. But the problem is we keep going through the same thing again for 20 years. We just keep giving it a different names. Grand Reward, then we went to Millennium Development Doors, went it back, we have initiative, and now sustainable development goals. This is where we are now. So we keep reducing the new, new idea. But the bottom line, like I like that uh, where the American calls, they said everyone is talking about it, but not doing it. That's the bottom line. Now there is a concept saying man's mind. Of course, man doesn't mean women are not. This is about all of us. But it's about man and women. But the, the court is being man. But it's not about man. Man's mind, once it's stretched by new idea, never regains its original size. So they said if you keep opening your mind, like you're doing now in this forum, it will never be going back. And that's why I encourage everyone, not only students, but even my colleagues, to travel to conferences, not for the proceeding. Don't worry about the proceeding. You have to travel to conferences to network with people, to see how people are doing things. I'm very much impressed with your way of doing the, managing the chair. And Carl yesterday, he managed So you are learning from that. You can see we learn how things happen. Yes, he, he reminded me now. But you can see yesterday, he was very calm in a very difficult session. He managed. So we are all learning. So this is what about what we said. You can see things are changing. You need to distinguish between invention and innovation. This is very important. This is innovation and this is invention. What are you thinking about knowledge based? And this is where knowledge is becoming part of the organization effectiveness. This is what we teach to students. What is an organization? It's a group of people. A bundle of resources, economic actor, but accumulation of knowledge and learning. And please read this carefully. It's not education. 
learning. Learning is different than education. So I think I will go quickly. This is now how we embed it knowledge within the sustainability framework. But again, we're still having that struggle of civilization. Uh, people are producing more knowledge and people are relying basically for other knowledge. The United Nations called 40 people in Hamilton in, in, in Canada and we went there. They said, let's think about it from everyone's perspective. So they brought academic, policy makers, government, NGOs. They said to them, they locked us in Hamilton for four days. They said, can you please work together? Come with one common definition and uh, approach to the future knowledge management in the whole world. And I know it's, it's surprising to most of you, after four days, we failed. <laughs> what can I say? So I think I will skip this quickly, definition of knowledge, because I think of the time. One thing I really want to emphasize here, knowledge is not information. This is one of the common mistakes. So we have data, like graph figures, we organize them in, say, in, 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 in groups, that's information. And then when we transform information into something which will help the decision maker to take decision, that is knowledge. And after knowledge, we have something called wisdom. This is a definition from the UK government. It's building organization intelligence by enabling people to improve the way they work in capturing, sharing, and using knowledge, it involves using ideas and experience of employee. You are here, you drop it, so you have the experience. Your experience will add to the accumulation of knowledge of your organization. You met people, you see in Dubai, you see how people are doing it here, and improve the organization performance. Building on what works well lead to best practice. And there's a guy from Apple saying, you can't really manage knowledge, but you know you manage the environment. So it helps you to foster the reuse of intellectual capital. It helps you, enable you for better decision making. And it eliminates redundant efforts. And it helps you to avoid repeating past mistakes. I always say to people, make mistakes, no problem. But don't do it again. Simple as that. Your problem is mistake, but try not to do it again. Make advantage of what other people. If you have learned something here, make advantage of what they have done and learned. Create conditions for innovation. So this is a knowledge economy uh, structure which involves ICT, innovation, education, and economic incentive. I think I will just move quickly, but the relationship clearly stated between sustainable development and knowledge-based economy. And the World Bank found that those who are doing very well in sustainability, they are doing very well in knowledge economy. And you can see the leading country in knowledge is Sweden, followed by Finland and Denmark. These are all Scandinavian, so that clearly something happening there very good. So they both also, you can see they are scoring high in, in knowledge economy. Again, innovation, ICT, you can see Korea number one. Yes, Korea number one, not USA or UK, as many people will think. ICT for development, least developing countries. This is very interesting, which relates to you. This is a new measurement for how the country is going well towards the knowledge-based economy. Is what we call it digital natives. Natives are you, are you the youth, between 15 to 24 years is uh, close to ICT. The more you have youth who are actually close using ICT for five years, the more the country will definitely have a good prosperous future. So this is all covered from the economies. You can see people shifting from homeless country conflict to real digital divide and so on. Each country has different perspective of technology needs. This is our UK. A few years ago, they have done said, This is what, in, what cons concerns the UK in terms of technology. The important message here, this list should not be the example of you in UAE or India. Each country has different technological perspective and needs. The same thing for innovation and so on. One example here I will give. This coffee, you know Nestle coffee. You like Nestle coffee, right? In the past, they said, many years ago, they said, we are a good company. Where is it from, by the way? Where is this steel coffee come from? Which country? Where? It's from uh, Switzerland. Every time I ask people, they get drunk. What is the capital of Switzerland? <laughs> Why you jumping? It doesn't make make fall, so I can guess more like I get all the answers. Geneva, whatever is Europe, but it's not. Yes, now, this company, 
They said, since people like our coffee, let's make it in a can and give it to them. And they went to engineer. They said to him, you are a good engineer. They said, yes. Can you make coffee in a can? And he said, yes, I can put it in a can. They said, no, we want you to put it there. And when people open it, it will be hot. He said, oh, yeah, I'm a very clever guy. I did my PhD and blah, 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 blah. I will do it. And he did it. And they have the coffee in the can. This product went to the market and it failed. Why? Best company in the world, best company in the world, best research and development, best technology provider, they produced the product, it failed in the market. Why? Quickly, because the chair is looking at me. Sorry? No. Excellent. The customer doesn't need it. What's the customer need from coffee? What, sorry? Uh, a little bit. Give somebody quickly. The smell, the smell, the spirit, the spirit what do all this mean? What, sorry? What all these also experience, all together call it environment. You need environment to enjoy the coffee. You need to go to, here is not an environment to enjoy coffee. Adam is facing it. That's why in the UK when I was a student, if you want to propose to a girl, to you like her, you don't say to her, let's go for a nightclub. No. You start by the coffee. You say, can we have coffee? Because it's an environment where you can talk to people, relax. And I remember one of the managers who trained me, American on the company, he said, when you say to her, would you like to go for coffee? Say to her, would you like to go for coffee Friday night or Saturday night? That means definitely she will get that. <laughs> so, so we have to take all this in time. I think these are all statistics. I will not bombard you, but they are there to complement this presentation. This is a surprising. In 2000, the OCD countries have done a big research and they found, and the graph is not coming, imagine almost 50% of Portuguese are not good enough to contribute to the economy. And look to the US, Sweden itself. So it's not, the lack of education is not just a problem for developing countries, but it was a big shock for developed countries. So let's understand, in this country, the knowledge economy, we have done it here in UAE. And I remember, now the United Arab Emirates, one of the countries, although they have the oil, but they are reducing their dependency on oil by almost 10%. And I think you should give applause to the UAE because it's the leading country in this region. Obama, he's been asked many times, many people analyze him, they said he, the technology was his friend. And he used the technology exactly to make him succeed. And when I said to people, Obama winning in the, in the US, please don't see it, okay, he's a black guy. Went, no, 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 no. The black people in America are very limited. How many there are, 17 million or something. You talk about Syria and 70, and he's still winning. He got that presidency because he was good. Not because he's black or white or yellow or orange. So this is where you need to understand. So I think we will finish here with lessons from Taiwan. The Taiwanese, they do something very good when they send somebody like you to do a PhD in Silicon Valley. They don't wait for them until they come back and learn from them. They, they learn from them while they're in the Silicon Valley. So my message to you young entrepreneurs, try to learn quickly. Even you are here, try to learn. Don't wait for six to learn. So quickly I will pass on these things. India, you know India is the, country, the world leader in milk production. Biotechnology is very much advanced in India. Most of the publishing online is done in India. Oxford University Press, John Wiley, all of them, they do e-publishing and all that stuff in India. Because if, if, if you send it by email, it comes back to you. We have been relying on India in the UK for 14 years now. So this is where you can see. Can I do a job in my own country, which Adam in the UK will buy it from me? Yes, you can. We spend thousands and thousands of pounds on companies in India. We have never seen them by our eyes. Why? Because we send them the text, they send us the book back. We look to the book, well designed, everything is fine, we give them their money. I don't need to see them. They don't need to come to me in London. So this is where I want to at the end of to think of, can I sell to someone without even traveling to this place? So quick policy, I think I discussed this one, technology does not transfer eventually. This is the success model, you have to have a model of, of transfer. 
linkage policy, end user consideration, you have to have an appropriate technology, you have to have a breakthrough mechanism, funding, and timing. Now, funding is the one which you have completed for yesterday. The same like these seven arrows in our country, in order for them to give a magnificent view to the queen, they need to, to, to fly with a, with, with, a, with a formula. If one of them is faster than the other, we don't get the shape, we don't get the nice look. And that's what you need to consider when you're doing our technology amount. I think I will stop here because there will be a question. So three things, communication, infrastructure, and process. So you really need to understand, in order to break through, you need to have good communication skills, you need to have infrastructure, it could be laptop, it could be computer, network. Don't underestimate the importance of your network. And you need to have a process, how I'm going to do it. This is in Arabic, but I brought it because we are in New York, Arab Emirates, and this is a picture from an Ayan municipality, which is a city like one and a half hour from here, when we deploy the project, the chairman of the DMA said to me, Adam, you talk so nicely about knowledge management and it will change the, the performance for my employees. How would I know, Adam, that happened? Because knowledge is so elusive. You can't hold it. This is a question I've been asked by the government here. And I said to him, Your Excellency, you will know the result. The day I am not training your staff, but one of the UAE nationals is training them confidently to produce a result. And that was the day when this guy, we trained them, he is now delivering the training. Because if the day I can transfer my knowledge to him, my job is done. Then you know the job is done, and then he can train all these people. That's the result. I don't need to stay here for life. I need to have in, in many, many countries. So this is where I finish. Uh, being present, you have to be present. If you really need a future at the yours. You really need to be present, which means either here, by Skype, you need to physically and mentally be with what is going on. And I think the good thing you are here. So when you go back, make sure you communicate. Don't lose communication. Read what is in your time, Allah, everything. Secondly, be good. Always try to be good. And the important thing to be good as a young entrepreneur is the essence which was just being told about in the very special. Always ask yourself, this is something good, I need to be good. I don't care whether somebody is going to charge me or not, or the government is. I need to be good, I need to be kind, I need to love other people. That's what you should have. Being in touch, email, people, Facebook, anything, any social media. Being creative, come with new ideas. You need to excite people. And finally, it's being global. And this is what you are doing here, global, global. Don't think of your own country. And I will finish here and have the point question.